In this video, I am going to talk about the IPv6 any source multicast or ASM implementation with IPv4 routing locator space. Look at here. As you can see here, in the EID spaces, we are using the IPv6, but in the RLOOK address space, we are using, in this example, IPv4. I am going to show you how you can implement the IPv6 any source multicast in IPv4 or look space. Okay, here we are only going to practice or configuring this scenario because the concept of this scenario exactly same with the scenario that you learn about the IPv6 ASM or IPv4 ASM. Okay, because of that, let me to start the configuration. Before that, if uh, we want to understand what is happening, okay, we can say that in the past enterprises using or used IPv4 addressing in the RLOOK address space, for example. However, to the scale of IPv6 addressing and other benefits that IPv6 addressing provides, such as security, a shift occurred in network addressing requirements, and most enterprises and data centers are now interested in deploying just IPv6 enabled host or dual stack host with both, with both IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. Moreover, moreover uh, applications today are designed Designed to support both IPv4 and IPv6 infrastructure. This changing requirement created a need to support IPv6 multicast over the Lisp infrastructure so that multicast applications using IPv6 addressing can communicate across multiple Lisp sites. Lisp IPv6 multicast support was added on the iOS XE platform starting in the 16.2 release. Okay, prior to this release, iOS XE platform supported only IPv4 uh, multicast in Lisp. Okay, here uh, because of that, here as you can see, I'm using iOS XE with a version more than 16.2 because of that we can configure the IPv6 ASM in IPv4 RLOOK space. Okay, let me to do the configuration. I configure this scenario before and I'm going to review only the configuration after that maybe we need to add some comments to this configuration and finally we will experience the function of this scenario here as you can see we have XTR1s, XTR2, XTR3 and XTR4 and because we are using ASM or any source multicast we need one RP this is the RP CSR10 for example and this is the IP address of the RP okay now let me to start the verification of the configuration of the rotor one this is the rotor one or c uh, or csr1 or xtr1 r1 en conf t host name is xtr1 i enabled ipv6 multicast routing and also unicast routing you know that because here in the eid address space okay we are using the multicast routing and also for example unicast routing if we need to enable them for IPv6. You know that in IPv6, both IPv6 unicast routing and multicast routing, both of them are disabled. If you need them, you need, you should uh, enable them. But uh, you know that in uh, CSR1 now, we are using both also IPv4 routing, but we don't need to enable it. And here, you know that I'm not going to use the IPv4 multicast routing because of that. Here, we don't have this command. The only command that we need to use is the IPv6 unicast routing and IPv6 multicast routing. And you know that by default, the IPv4 unicast routing is enabled. Here, we have the configuration of the interface gigabit one, this interface. The R look address space interface. This interface is the uh, has the IPv4. The IP address of this interface is 10.151.255.255.255.0. Then IP OSPF network point point here. In the R look, we are we are using OSPF version two means OSPF for IPv4. Then no shutdown. After that, we have one loopback interface on the router one. The IP address of this loopback interface is quad one quad two five five. This is the IP address of the RLOOK. As you know, here RLOOK has IPv4 
and then we have interface gigabit 2 this interface is residing in the eid address space and the ipv6 address of this interface is 2001 db801 double column 1 slash 64 the ip address of this interface okay and then no shutdown then i i configured ospf1 on the router one router ospf1 router id is quad one and then network 10151 quad 0 area 0 network quad 1 quad 0 area 0 because we need to enable the ospf on the gigabit 1 and also on the loopback 0 then here we have the configuration of the list router list ipv6 itr you know that because here we have we are using the ai the address space with ipv6 we need only to enable ipv6 itr and ipv6 etr etr we don't need to use ipv4 etr or itr okay you learn about these features in the previous videos ipv6 itr this is itr and also etr ipv6 etr and then you know that we need to configure the ip address of the map resolver for ip for itr ipv6 itr map resolver quad 5 quad 5 is the loopback address of the router 5 then ipv6 etr map server again quad 5 with the key of the cisco this is i configured this finally we need to advertise this uh, eid to the r5 database mapping 2001 db801 double column slash 64 this address with the r look of quad 1 the ipv4 address of the csr1 and then with priority of 1 and weight of 100 you know that for ASM we need to configure the RP address with this command IPv6 PIM RP address 2001 db 10 double column 10 this is the IP address of the for example loopback 1 in the CSR 10 I we will configure it okay this is the RP address IPv6 PIM here let me to say that when you are enabling IPv6 multicast routing on all of the interfaces that our IPv6 enabled interface, the PIM sparse mode automatically or the PIM automatically started because of that on the gigabit 2 we don't need to use ipv6 for example pim sparse mode we don't have this command and automatically the pim is working is enabling on the gigabit 2 that's it now let me to uh, verify the configuration of the router 2 because the configuration of router 2 and router 1 are similar let me only the review the configuration enable conf t hostname xtr2 again ipv6 multicast routing and ipv6 unicast routing about the interface gigabit 1 we need to assign ip address 10252 then ip ospf net 4 point point and then no shutdown we have one loopback interface interface loopback zero the ip address of this interface is quad to quad two five five and finally interface gigabit two the interface gigabit two's ip address is ipv6 address 2001 db802 double column two slash 64 then no shutdown after that rotor osp of one rotor id is quad two network 10252 quad zero area zero the gigabit one ip address network quad two quad zero area zero the loopback zero ip address after that this is the lisp configuration rotor lisp ipv6 itr ipv6 etr ipv6 itr map resolver quad 5 and then ipv6 etr map server quad 5 key cisco the same configuration as router 1 and then database mapping 2001 db802 double column slash 64 quad 2 priority 1 weight 100 and finally the rp address configuration ipv6 pim rp address 2001 db8010 double column 10 that's it after that we can configure the router 3 this is the router 3 again here we have the similar configuration en conf t hostname xtr3 ipv6 unicast routing and ipv6 multicast routing then interface gigabit 1 ip addressing 10 3 5 3 2 5 5 2 5 5 2 and 2 5 5 0 ip ospf network point point and then no shutdown after that interface loopback 0 ip address is quad 3 quad 2 5 5 then interface gigabit 2 this interface ipv6 address is 2001 db803 double column 3 slash 64 and then no shutdown then rotor osp of 1 red rotor id is quad 3 network 10 3 5 3 quad 0 area 0 the ip address of this interface then network quad 3 quad 0 area 0 the ip address of the loopback 0 and then lisp configuration rotor lisp 
IPv6 ITR, IPv6 ETR, IPv6 ITR Map Resolver Quad 5, IPv6 ETR Map Server Quad 5 Key Cisco, and then database mapping 2001 DB803 double colonel 64 this range. Quad 3, the IP address of the loopback of this router, priority 1, and then weight 100. Finally, IPv6 PIM RP address, 2001 DB803 